Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me today for another video. So, the last couple of videos have all been about the Zastone D9000, and this is the third video in the series on this little radio. It's quite a feature packed radio. In the first video, we looked at the features and settings and basic operation of the radio, and we did an on air test. And in the second part, we had a look at the cross band and same band repeat functions. And so far, everything seems really promising. For the price you pay for this radio, it is a cracking bit of kit. Now, a lot of people have commented saying it's very similar to the ICOM 2820, and I did mention this in the first and second videos. So, in this video today, we're going to look at the differences and the similarities between this and the ICOM 2820. So, as you can see, they are two very, very similar radios. They look very similar, clearly modelled on the ICOM 2820 when Zasto were looking into making this radio. And um, it has been out a couple of years, like the ICOM 2820. So we're going to look at the differences and the similarities between the two radios. So you can see in the first column of this table here, I've listed various features. The second column applies to the Zastone D9000, and the third column applies to the ICOM 2820. And as you can see, these radios line up against each other pretty well. The two major differences is that... Um, the 2820 does D-Star, whereas the Zastone doesn't do D-Star. And the 2820 has diversity receive, whereas the Zastone D9000 doesn't. So if we look at the top there, these both transmit on FM and they both receive on AM. Uh, as I say, the 2820 has D-Star, whereas the Zastone D9000 doesn't. Uh, the Zastone has 512 channels and the ICOM has 522, so very similar. Uh, output powers are similar as well. We've got um, low power of 5 watts on the Zastone, medium power of 25 watts, and then a high power of 40 watts, stroke 50 watts, depending on whether you're on VHF or UHF. And then the ICOM 2820 is 5 watts on low power, 15 watts on medium power, and 50 watts on high power. As I said a second ago, the ICOM has diversity receive. Now, in simple terms, diversity receive compares the receiving signal strength from two different antennas. So on the ICOM, you've got antenna 1, which is transmit and receive, and then antenna 2, which is receive only. Uh, the, and then the radio automatically selects the strongest signal. So this feature is useful when you're listening to a moving vehicle or the transmitting station that you're receiving is moving itself. Now, all isn't lost here because where the ICOM lacks the diversity receive, it does have cross band repeat and same band repeat, which the ICOM 2820 doesn't have. And if you want more information on these, then check the previous video. There'll be a link at the end of this one. Uh, both radios have dual receive, both have dual VFO, both have a removable head unit, which is magnetic, and both have the option to move the head unit up and down depending on how you've got the radio mounted. Now, something else the ICOM has that the Zastone doesn't is band scope so you can look at the wider band on the icon whereas you can't on the zastone which is no big deal um, both have a color change in display um, as you saw in the previous videos the zastone changes between red green purple blue uh, white and orange the icon changes between green and orange and the display on the icon is less intense uh, but in dark conditions it's still just as well lit as the zastone both radios have auto power off both have weather alerts depending on which country you're in. Um, the ICOM 2820 has GPS and that is used in line with the D-Star. Uh, the ICOM 2820 also has a voice recorder which the Zastone doesn't. Um, both are PC programmable. And then the Zastone has FM car transmit so it will transmit to your car stereo system which we are going to actually look at in the next video so stay tuned for that. So just on price, the Zastone costs around 180 to 200 pounds new at the time of filming, and the ICOM 2820 at the time of filming, because it's not in production anymore, costs around 389 pounds um, on average at used price. So that's for a second-hand one. So you can see there's a massive difference in price on this radio. When the 2820 come out, it would have poss possibly been around six or seven hundred pounds. I haven't, I have not been able to find any prices. So if anyone knows the price uh, that these were new, then just come and let me know in the comments below. 
Now, the ICOM 2820 was released in three different versions. You've got the USA version, the Australia version, and the export version. Now, they all transmit on various different bands. We've got the export version of the ICOM 2820 on the bench here, and of course, the single model of the Zastone D9000, because that's the only one that's been made. And as you can see, they both transmit on very similar bands. Now, the Zastone does have FM receive for FM radio, and it does have airband. The ICOM 2820 doesn't have FM receive, but it does have airband as well. So, yeah very very similar in terms of operation so what we're going to do now is a couple of audio tests I'm not going to do any on-air tests because um, it's very hard to gauge the similarity or difference between two radios when you're talking to another station so we're going to talk to the SDR and we're also going to talk to my ICOM 5100 we're going to transmit on UHF low power uh, both for both radios and we're just going to have a look on the SDR what the transmission looks like um, and we're also going to be able to hear the difference in audio quality as well. This is M3 HHY testing the ICOM 2820 on low power. On the SDR, 12345, 54321, M3 HHY. This is M3 HHY testing the ICOM 2820 on low power. Received by the ICOM 5100, 12345, 54321. M3HHY. This is M3HHY testing the Zastone D9000 on the SDR on low power. 12345, 54321, M3HHY. This is M3HHY testing the Zastone D9000 on low power. Received by the ICOM 5100. 12345-54321. M3HHY. Okay, so as you can see, quite a fair comparison there. The Zastone held up quite well compared to the uh, ICOM. Um, didn't sound bad at all, considering the uh, cost of this is a third of the price of what the ICOM um, was when it was produced. Okay, so as you can see, quite a big difference there visually between the two signals from between the ICOM and the Zastone. The Zastone doesn't seem to have as clean a transmission as the ICOM does. That doesn't mean I'm going to write the ICOM off. It's not a fair test because the transmit and receive antennas are very, very close to each other. They're less than three or four feet apart and we are transmitting close to the antennas themselves. And we're also transmitting close to the SDR, which doesn't have amazing filtering. Okay, so there could be some harmonics coming from the Zastone. I don't have a more high-tech way of comparing between the two and looking at the transmission quality from the Zastone. Harmonics like that may be lost and inaudible and unseen on the SDR at a few metres away, so I'm not going to write the Zastone off yet. Okay, so there you have it, guys. I just wanted to show you the differences between the two radios there. Um, as I said earlier, both really feature-packed radios, and the Zastone definitely uh, manages to hold its own compared to the ICOM 2820. Uh, I've been using this Zastone radio now for a couple of weeks, and I, it's, it's, it's great. I can't find issue with it whatsoever. Okay, so I'll leave that one there. If you have any comments, suggestions, or questions, drop them in the box below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, then hit the subscribe button. And all that's left to say is 7-3. We'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.